The people don't look at the message, but they listen to the message in the messenger. Lord, I thank you for your grace. For your word says your grace is sufficient. And I pray favor over today over the homeless, elderly, the poor, and the sick. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Another Sunday. Isn't it good to come to church Sundays? I remember when Sunday come, I'll be like, uh -uh, I'm not going to church. I would find every excuse not to go to church. And I think a lot of people still do that. When COVID came, everybody's like, wow, we ain't got to go to church. So we can watch it online. Yeah. Yes. And then everyone watch it. When they call Chase is laughing because he's just like one of them. Chase, did you hear the message? Yeah, yeah, what message? That's how it goes. But today's message is called, Just Do It. Somebody say, Just Do It. Y'all remember Nike? The commercial, Bo Jackson, Michael Jordan, Just Do It. Just Do It. This message is a powerful message because a lot of us are lazy. Don't want to go to church. A lot of us procrastinate. Y'all know any procrastinators? Hold your hand up. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. We point fingers. People point fingers. My wife put her thumb up. She, she put her thing up, point a finger at herself. Wow. Procrastinators. Everybody point their brother-in-law. Man, what about that backyard? Anyways, we don't take it. Anyways, anyway, we're working on the backyard. We're going to work it out. We're going to work it out. <laughs> Procrastination means the action of delaying or postponing something. Postponing things when you're lazy. You know, a lot of us, we postpone so many things. I postponed a relationship with my wife. We was, we was together, what, 18 years before I asked her to marry me. 19, 20, what, a long time? I kept procrastinating. Every time I see a ring commercial, I'd be like, yeah, uh, I'm going to ask you to marry me. Yeah, I'm right. One day, I promise you, you know what, when that time was right, God knew exactly what he was doing. I wasn't ready to be married. A lot of us aren't ready to be married. We procrastinate on doing things because we're not even ready. But you know what? We got to have faith. Faith is action. You got to move around. You got to step out in faith. Put y'all's hands together. Come on now. We got to step out in faith. When you're lazy and not doing something, how are you going to accomplish your dreams? You keep waiting on something. Keep the land. How are you going to get where you got to go if you're just sitting around all day at the house? Like me, I love football. On Sundays, I do not want to move from the couch. But always, I find a way. I got to go do something. How are you going to pay your bills if you don't do something? I'm serious. A lot of us procrastinate. And my wife told me something that's real. She says, you know what? You can tell how somebody lives how the way their car looks. You open their car up, it's all nasty. That's how they are. And that's how you are inside. As Christians, on the outside you look good, but on the inside you're nasty. Disgusting. Talk about people. You nasty girl. Y'all know that? You talk about people. You cuss. As soon as you leave church, hallelujah, brother, hallelujah. As soon as they get an eye. church, you right on, you on it, you on it, man, oh my God, here we go again. On the inside, you are so horrible and disgusting. And the first thing I wanted to talk about, you need to deny yourself. Stop doing the things you used to do, speaking about things you used to do, always cussing, always doing this and that. I had to deny myself. I didn't know exactly what that means, but you have to deny who you used to be. And you got to die daily, hallelujah. You should be putting your hands together. You need to die every single day. Every single day, the old you should die. I'm not the same I used to be. Man, I was a bad guy. And I remember how I used to clean up. What I would do, my mom told me to clean, so I throw it under the bed. She told me to sweep, I throw it under. I, it's probably green beans still under my mom's couch. I used to just throw it under there. And same thing, I grew up, I'd throw something over here, sweep. Next thing you know, you see something big. I used to do it my wife all the time. I throw it, she finds, why do you always throw it under there? That's what we're doing as Christians. We're throwing stuff under the rugs. This is going to hurt a lot of people because it's the truth. The truth will set you free, hallelujah. Somebody said, the truth will set me free. We're too busy procrastinating. I told the guys last night, y'all over arguing. See, we run a football league, but these guys are too busy arguing, wanting to fight over something little. And I said, that's why you're not in the NFL. Because you want to gripe and complain every single time. You want to bicker and complain. That's why you're at the next level. It's not because you ain't got the talent. It's because of you. You can't die daily. We need to die daily. Be humble. Go to the scripture. Matthew 10, verse 32 through 33. And a lot of us are denying Jesus. Matthew, what? Matthew 10, verse 32 through 33. Come on up for a sis. Spar, go. Spar. Clearly to other people. I believe in Jesus. If you do 
do that, I will say to my Father in heaven, this is someone that that is my disciple. But if you say to other people, I do not believe in Jesus, I will then say to my Father in heaven, I do not know this person. He is not one of my disciples. Wow. Thank you, sir. The Bible says, if you deny me before people, I will deny you before the Father in heaven. And that's what we're doing. I used to be scared all the time to pray in front of people. I would never pray. I didn't want to pray over people. I didn't want to talk about Jesus. I go to church, but first thing you talk about Jesus, I'm doing this. I'm denying God. The Bible says if I deny God, if I don't, if I don't put God for or talk about Jesus, when I get to heaven, guess what? Jesus be like, I never knew you. That means guess where I go? I don't get to go to heaven, guess where I go? This is deep because it's the truth. We come to church all day long. And as soon as we get a chance, you need to pray with somebody, you walk into church. Sorry, you won't pray over. You don't talk about Jesus. You jump into what they're talking to. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to jump in their conversations. Talk about what they talk about. You're denying God every single time. Imagine that. Could you imagine with your kids? You go out somewhere and they say, hey, how's your mom and dad doing? You go to their school. I don't have no mom and daddy. Could you imagine that? Oh, my mom and dad was never there for me. My son hurt me one day. We was playing basketball. And he told me I was never there for him. And I was like, what? You know how that made me feel? Could you imagine you do that to God? You deny him. You won't even talk about Jesus. You deny the Father. You deny the Son. And a lot of us continue to do it daily because we ask for help. But we don't pray to God. We don't have faith. Put y'all's hands together. You ain't got faith in God. You're not praising him. You're not worshiping him. But when you should, at the right time, at the right time, God knows exactly. But we need to be humble. And the second thing I want to talk about is we need to have dedication. You practice how you play. Coach would tell me that. You practice exactly how you're going to play. We need to start being dedicated to God, to his word. Start reading his word. Not just coming to church. Read. Open up the Bible. Open up the Bible. Be dedicated. How are you going to get to go where you got to go? How are you going to be successful if you're not dedicated? Like my brother, he goes to school. He's dedicated. There's something he wants to do. He wants to do. He's dedicated. Could you imagine if he didn't open that book up to the end of the week? Oh, man, I got to go to school. Have a shirt undone. I got to, oh, man. He's going to make an F every single time. A lot of us, I'm telling you, as Christians, we're not doing that. We're not even opening up the Bible. Come to church. You forgot the whole message. Oh, man, what did he talk about? Oh, my gosh. <coughs> where that, that dispensary at? Don't even know what I did. I don't know what the pastor even said. But I'm going to tell you something. If we could deny God, he will deny you. We don't need to deny him no more. We need to be dedicated to God. We need to start practicing how we play. What you put in is what you're going to get out of it. Everything in your life, what you put in is what you get out of it. Same thing with your kids. If you're not telling about Jesus, if you're not letting them know what's going on with the real world, just the other day, it's a mass shooting, just yesterday. Y'all know how many mass shootings has been? They said, what, 600 or 300? 600 mass shootings and none of them knew about Jesus. Guarantee it. Just last night at the club, they said, dude, they just shot it up. Just shooting up everything now. I, I recommend everybody to carry their pistols, amen? <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> I'm serious. People carrying guns, they carry it on now because you never know. But you know what my pistol is? It's the word of God. Put y'all's hands together for Jesus. Get dedicated. Get dedicated to God. Spending time with the Lord. Talking to people about Jesus. Touching them. Praying with them at the mall. When I see people, I can touch them. Back in the day, I would not pray. I was scared. I wasn't just scared. I was scared. But when I read that scripture, it really scared me. If I deny Jesus before men, God will deny me before. Jesus will deny me for his father. Isn't that something? I'm telling y'all right now. This, is, this Bible is real. But we need to be dedicated. Dedicated with the relationship with God. You have to have a relationship with the Father. A lot of us have relationships with our loved ones, but we don't have relationships. You say you love them, but do you really know them? That's why I say, before you get married, get to know that person. I didn't know my wife snored. She was like, I do not snore. And guess what I did? I turned to camp corner one day, y'all. Came in there. I said, That's, maybe listen to this. She said, that is not me, that's you. I said, uh-uh. <laughs> you got to get to know people. You got to even get to know God even more, have a relationship. If you don't have a relationship with God, you don't have nothing. I'm telling you right now, have a relationship with God. Open up your Bible. 
praise and worship, talk about Jesus. These are things that I'm counting on doing right here. The last thing I want to talk about, we need to separate ourselves. Turn away from the wicked. Turn away from you what you used to be. Sometimes I ain't gonna lie, I still I pass clubs, I see Hawaiian Dons. I want to go in there and get me a 64 ounce drink sometimes. I want to go. I know how fun I used to be. As soon as I would walk in the club, I remember they played that song. Pimp Juice. Woo! I just walk in there. I buy the whole bar, buy everybody drinks. Yes, sir. That was my song. Yes, sir. Sing that. But I had to separate myself. And when I got out of prison, one of my friends, I'm not going to say his name, but he got upset. He was like, man, I put money in your books. He said, all this stuff I did for you. But he was doing this. Look. All this stuff I did for you, Juice. You can't call me? Oh, no. I'm not calling you. I'm separating myself. I'm not the man I used to be. Put your hands together. I'm not the same guy no more. I don't shoot pistols no more. I praise God. I shoot the Bible with people. Hit the, I hit the devil right here with a gospel gun. Hallelujah. Somebody say the devil's a lie. He is a lie. And I'm telling you right now, we got to separate ourselves. It's going to be hard. Last night I had a football game. Not everybody's going to support what I do. They're not. But I had to separate myself. Last night I seen people fighting and arguing over the same thing. But they're going to always do that because they don't have the dream I have. And I'm telling you right now, church, if you got a dream, don't let nobody ever tell you that you can't do it. Come on now. Don't ever let nobody step in front of you in God's plan. I'm telling you right now, being dedicated. Go to the scripture if you can. I love my wife. She's going to go ahead and go to it. Matthew 20, verse 16. Those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. Thank you. We always want to be number one, huh? In everything we do. Sometimes it's going to be good to be number two. Let God be number one. We need to just do it. Stop talking about it. Let's just do it, y'all. I'm telling you right now, church, I'm challenging y'all to start doing what God wants you to do. Stop trying to be number one in everything because you're not going to be number one in everything. My grandpa, Emmett, Emmett, Emmett Riggins. A lot of y'all never got to eat on Emmett Riggins. Oh, yeah, yeah, O'Keefe, that's his middle name. Emmett O'Keefe. Yeah. He told me something that, I, I, that, that was real that always stuck with me. He said, you know what? There's always going to be one person better than you. There's always going to be somebody going to be able to beat you. He said, you think you're tough, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, no, it's always going to be somebody tougher than you. But you know what? When you put God in the mix and everything you do, God will help you through your situation. This message is called Just Do It, and I want you all to do it. Everybody stand up. That's my Lord and Savior. And I believe he rose on the third day. Thank you, Father, for this prayer. So, Father, I want to pray right now. That we listen to this message, that we do everything we're supposed to do. We don't procrastinate anymore, Lord. That we'll speak about you to people everywhere we go. Not just at work, but to our children, because they're the one that's lost right now, Lord. So, Lord, I pray for somebody on YouTube and Facebook and at the church. That right now you're telling your kids about Jesus. That way they don't be just like you used to be. The inside of your car, everything about you is dirty, but sir, right now, I claim it right now, you are healed. You are no longer the same. You are set free right now in Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. You are set free. Thank you, Father. Lord, I know every Sunday we come here praising you, Lord, but we want to say we love you, Father. We believe in you, Lord. We know, Father, your word says many are called, but few are chosen. So, Father, thank you for that purpose. Thank you for that right now, Lord. Thank you, Father. We believe in you, Lord. I know Thanksgiving's coming up, Lord. But we are thankful, Lord. Not just for food, but we are thankful for you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be able to give. It says Thanksgiving. To be thankful to give. So, Lord, we go out there feeding the homeless on Tuesday, Lord. Bless us with the hands. Bless us with the minds and souls to be with them, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. So right now, everybody in the church, you will prosper. You will prosper. Your kids will prosper. Your finances will prosper. You will grow in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Right now, we're going to do tithing offering. Whatever you can put in there, I want you to believe in it. 
Believe that God will multiply it just like he does the fish and bread. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm going to pray right now that everything that we give to the church, that is because of you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are witnesses right now. Father, I command it. I believe in you. Father, I believe in your command to put Jesus first. Lord, we honor you today. Come on, church. Put your hands together. I want to thank you guys for coming out to Unified Family Church. Happy Thanksgiving. We love you guys. Everybody repeat after me. Unified Family!